six months ago, as of me recording this, there was a total solar eclipse that passed over Mexico, the United States, and Canada. And now that it's roughly six months later, there's about to be another solar eclipse that is going to pass over the sort of easternmost part of Canada and Europe, but it's going to be an annular solar eclipse where the moon does not quite cover the sun. And I thought this would be a good chance to talk about why there are only eclipses approximately every six months and why total solar eclipses that you can actually see are comparatively rare. And furthermore, why isn't there an eclipse every single month, right? Because an eclipse is when either the moon passes in front of the sun as viewed from the earth or when the earth passes in front of the sun as viewed from the moon and one casts a shadow on the other. And of course, the reason that there's not an eclipse every single month, because the moon is in orbit around the earth. And so it would seem like, well, shouldn't it pass in, you know, between the earth and the sun once a month and then pass uh, back, you know, on the other side of the earth also once a month. And of course, the reason it doesn't is that the moon's orbit is not in the same plane as the earth's orbit. The moon's orbit is tilted by just a few degrees relative to the Earth's orbit around the sun, and so there can only be an eclipse if the moon happens to pass either between the Earth and the sun or uh, behind the Earth for a lunar eclipse, right when it happens to be passing through what's called its ascending or descending nodes, which if it has, if it's a plane that is rotated relative to the plane of the Earth orbiting the sun, then that has some characteristic angle, but it also has a single axis where the planes intersect. And of course, the moon passes through its ascending node where it's passing uh, up through the intersection of those two planes and its descending node where it's passing down through the intersection of those two planes, well, twice a month, once for the ascending node and once for the descending node. But usually the ascending and descending nodes do not line up with being either between the Earth and the Sun, or behind the Earth as viewed from the Moon. And so there's only a eclipse uh, if the ascending node or the descending node happens to line up with either the position between the Earth and the Sun or the position behind the Earth. And in turn, the reason that not every solar eclipse is a total eclipse is that A, the ascending node sometimes just barely misses and you get a partial eclipse, but also in addition to not being aligned with the in, with the plane of the Earth's orbit, the Moon's orbit is also not perfectly circular, it's an ellipse, and so if it happens to pass through its ascending or descending node between the Earth and the Sun, and there's a solar eclipse, but it also happens to pass through at its apogee, right? The far point in the ellipse is the apogee, and the, the near point in the ellipse is the perigee. And if it happens to pass through closer to apogee, the moon will be further away, and it will be smaller in its apparent angular size as viewed from the Earth, and it won't completely cover the sun. And so then you get an annular eclipse where the moon passes in front of the sun, and it may even be centered but it won't completely cover the sun because it's just slightly too far away. And you only get a total solar eclipse if A, the moon is passing through its ascending or descending node right when it's also passing between the Earth and the sun, and B, it is low enough in its orbit, so close to its perigee, so that it completely covers the sun, and C, if the place in the, that the Earth happens to be rotating through when that happens coincides with somewhere that you can actually see the eclipse from, because there is a solar eclipse approximately every six months. It's just that it may or may not be a total eclipse, it might be a partial eclipse, and it might be an annular eclipse, and whether it's a partial, total, or annular, it may or may not be visible from anywhere that actually has land. It frequently just passes over the ocean or over the Arctic or the Antarctic. And the same is true for lunar eclipses, except, of course, lunar eclipses 
require a bit less alignment because the Earth is quite a bit bigger than the Moon and it casts a shadow that's much larger than the Moon. And there's, in addition to the annular eclipse that's coming up, there is a partial lunar eclipse that's coming up in just a few days. And the Moon will be passing through the point behind the Earth, uh, not quite at its ascending or descending node, it'll be off just a little bit, and so it'll be passing uh, entirely through the Earth's penumbra, so the outer part of the Earth's shadow. So if you were standing on the surface of the Moon, you would essentially see a partial eclipse uh, of the Sun, where the Earth is partially but not fully occluding the Sun, uh, unless you were standing on the very small corner of the Moon that will be fully eclipsed as viewed from the Earth. And so we'll see part of the Moon uh, inside the Earth's umbra, the Earth's total shadow, and a entirety of the moon will be in the Earth's penumbra, the sort of outer shadow where if you were standing on the moon you would see a partial eclipse of the sun. And so there's not an eclipse every month because the moon's orbit is neither in the same plane as the Earth's orbit nor a perfect circle, uh, but there is a pair of eclipses, solar and lunar, approximately every six months, but they're sometimes partial, sometimes total, and for solar eclipses they're sometimes annular, sometimes total. Of course, for lunar eclipses the Earth is so much larger than the Moon that there's never annular lunar eclipses, there's just partial and total. And we're going to have a total lunar eclipse visible from the United States next spring, which should be very nice, but there's going to be a very nice annular solar eclipse coming up in October, and a nice very small partial partial lunar eclipse coming up in just a few days, which will be visible from the United States. So hopefully you can get out and uh, see some of those. Thanks for watching.